Now Zamp comes with a debugging tool called xDebug, and we'd like to use that for debugging our web apps. We just need to modify some settings in our php.ini file to get this set up correctly. So what you want to do is bring up an explorer window and navigate to wherever you installed your uh, XAMPP folder to. You're going to go into the PHP folder. You're going to try to look for the php.ini file. Go ahead and open that file up to edit it. The first change we're going to make is we're going to search for the X debug section. And here you want to uncomment this line this, that says uh, Zend extension and then has the path to the uh, X debug DLL. All right, and to find the next line that we want to uh, edit, just add in remote underscore host after X debug. And what we're looking for is right here. This line that says xdebug.remotehost equals localhost. Go ahead and uncomment that line. The next edit is just nearby. You want to uncomment this line that says uh, xdebug.remotehandler equals dbgp. And then one more section up, you'll see xdebug.remoteenable. First, you want to uncomment the line, and then you want to set it to 1 for true. And for our last edit, just do a search for xdebug.remoteport. And go ahead and uncomment the line that says xdebug.remoteport equals 9000. That's all the changes we need to make there, so go ahead and uh, save your file and close it. Now, one other note that I'd like to make here if you have IIS installed or you have Skype installed on your machine, you will have some problems getting uh, Apache server to run correctly. What you want to do is make sure to uh, disable IIS, and then in Skype, you want to make sure that the option to use port 80 and 443 as alternatives for incoming connections, make sure that option is turned off. Okay, and at this point, you can go ahead and start the Apache service. And that'll do it for setting up XAMPP. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and set up our cloud host. This will allow us to deploy our applications for the world to see, but more importantly for this particular tutorial, it will also give us a source control repository. And we decided to go with Cloud Control because they offer a free hosting option with a very easy option to upgrade for scalability if you need it. Also, we found Bizarre Integration to work very easily with Cloud Control, which is great for the purposes of this tutorial. You're of course free to go with a different host if you want to, or skip this part altogether if you already have a host in the source control repository, or if you don't want one. Alright, as you might guess, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and bring up a web browser, navigate to www.cloudcontrol.com, find the sign up now button, right in here you can see why we chose Cloud Control. You get a, for free, one box per hour, unlimited ac apps, unlimited traffic. Uh, not scalable at all, but free. Go ahead and fill out the information here and click sign up. And once you do that, you'll get an activation code in your email. Go ahead and come back to the site and activate it. All right, and once it's activated, you're going to want to go ahead and log in. Okay, now we're going to come back to this later to uh, get everything set up correctly, but for now we're going to take a little detour. So Go ahead and just minimize this window. And what we're going to do now is get our source control system set up. We've decided to go with uh, Bazaar for a few reasons. First, it's cross-platform. Second, it integrates easily with Eclipse. And third, it's very flexible. It supports just about any workflow or workspace you may have. There are a number of other reasons to, to choose Bazaar. Um, I'm not going to be a salesman here. You can look it up yourself. And if you already have your own source control system, um, then feel free to use that instead. What you want to do is bring up a web browser, head to the download section. You're going to choose the uh, appropriate platform for this tutorial. We're going to go with Windows. And as of the time of this video, the latest stable release is 2.3.1. We're going to go ahead and grab the standalone. Once that's ready, go ahead and run the installation. And for the most part, we're just going to use the default options. One thing that you do want to make sure of, though, is up here you want to make sure that the uh, that 
it sets up the path environment variable for the uh, bazaar directory and then go ahead and install okay when that's done there's one more thing we want to do go ahead and bring up your web browser once again we want if you already if you don't already have it you're going to want the Microsoft Visual C++ 2008 redistributable package uh, so if you don't have it quickest way to find it is just go to Google type in C++ redistributable you'll see 2008 and then it'll take you right to the download page alright now hey this looks familiar we're gonna head back and uh, finish setting up our cloud control account with uh, Bazaar so go ahead and go back to the window that you minimized or re-log in if you closed it what you want to do is under the quick start you're gonna go ahead and go to the tutorial and then you need to choose your OS this tutorial is using Windows and then here you'll see why we pre-installed Bazaar and the uh, redistributable package what you want to grab now is the CCTRL command line client so go ahead and click the Windows installer right and as usual we're just going to go with the default options uh, I'd recommend you go ahead and uh, add the application directory to your system path and then start the install Now we're going to go ahead and use the CCTRL program that we just downloaded to generate an SSH key for our development machine. Go ahead and bring up the a, a command console. And this is why we uh, went ahead and added it to our application path. You can just type in CCTRL user and we want to type in key.add. Right, and whenever you log in uh, it'll ask you for your email and your password. And once you've logged in, it'll run your key.add command. Uh, this is expected where it says no public key found. Uh, type in yes to generate a key pair. So then you're just going to type in yes. All right, and we're done. And if you uh, navigate to the uh, path displayed there, you can see your uh, SSH key. We'll check ours right here. and you can see that it generated the file or the public and private keys anyway All right, that'll do it for that now we're going to go ahead and move on to our IDE installation now unfortunately once again we run into YouTube video size limitations so we need to cut the video off here and we'll continue from where we left off in the next video Ye Developer Tutorial Part 2-3 we'll have a link to it in the downloads section